cluster around LeBron, AD, and Kyle Kuzma. According to reports, they have a strong interest in D'Angelo Russell and plan to meet with him face-to-face -face when free agency begins. So, see your thoughts on a Russell Lakers reunion. Oh, man, this would be a great finish to, a, to an ugly story of a young, immature player. And I believe that, I know he doesn't want to do it this way, but some of those stories that came out, he believed that he wasn't portrayed in the right. And, and there was some misinformation that was put out about him. Um, I got a chance to know him. He had an outstanding season with Brooklyn. Could he play off the ball with LeBron James? Yes, he could. And if they don't get someone else as from a free agent, would he be your plan B? Yes, absolutely. He can take over in quarters. He can score the basketball. He's a playmaker, an elite passer of the basketball. And I'm just sure, a lot of times I like to look for Who's motivated? And I think going back to Los Angeles, being one of the, a failed top pick there, and going back there, understanding how to deal with Laker Nation and everything, I think it could be a great reunion. If only we had someone on the show right now that maybe watched him play 75 games this year that could give us a scouting report, but we do in Sarah Kustak. So Sarah, for people that haven't seen D'Angelo Russell that maybe don't live where we live, don't see him play that often, the Nets weren't on national TV a bunch. D'Angelo Russell this past season, who is gonna finish first or second in most improved player balloting, he and Pascal Siakam are the two guys really in the running for that. Tell us who D'Angelo Russell became this season. Well, I, I'm gonna start by talking about his game because yep. we know he was an all-star, but there was so much development and growth that I saw in the way in which he was able to play point guard, of course, as we know, <laughs> but off the ball. He's a guy that is savvy, he's crafty, mm -hmm. he knows how to work a pick and roll. And it, I think so many people focused on the scoring effort that he had, the way in which he shot the ball so well from the three. To me, he organized a team. He can push the pace, he can get things going, but his passing vision is elite. The things we say about LeBron of putting it on time, on target, is exactly what Russell can do. And I think more of the questions often came down to, okay, what's his character like? What's his personality like? How is he gonna fit in on a team? He was one of the most upstanding individuals, great character, teammates loved him. He came to work every single day. He was coached hard by Kenny Atkinson and he embraced that. And he's a guy who has a chip on his shoulder because he has something to prove. He believes that he can be one of the best point guards in the league, as he should. And his talent is unmatched. And I think, or I shouldn't say his talent is unmatched, but his his skill set is at a level of which, if he keeps continuing to thrive and be in the right situation, he he's got a lot of room to continue improving. More than anything, too, he's got a relationship with LeBron. Well, that's he has a relationship so that, with LeBron, and I know we're going to talk about Kyrie in a moment. To me, the Lakers are in a good position in this regard. If Kyrie goes to Brooklyn, I would imagine then D'Angelo Russell is available for mm -hmm. whomever wants to sign him and then go get him. And if Ky if D'Angelo Russell doesn't become available, it's most likely because Kyrie didn't go to Brooklyn. And if he's not going to Brooklyn, maybe it's the Knicks. But I would think it's really because he actually ends up choosing to go to the Lakers. What would this mean for the Lakers? Would I rather have Kyrie? Yes. Would I rather have Kimba? Yes. But if you decide you want to spend essentially all of your free agency dollars on one player, after Kyrie, Kimba, and Kawhi Leonard, D'Angelo Russell does make the most sense. It's the position of need. He adds shooting. Last year he was 37% from three on eight threes a game. We have seen, wow. I mean, so a high volume <laughs> yeah. and historically guys that play with LeBron, their three point percentage goes up one or two points just because he's gonna get you uncontested, a, uncontested yeah. and he's gonna hit you right in your shooting pocket. So if you can shoot seven plus threes a game at 37 or above, that is incredibly valuable. And if you are talking about, okay, could this top four be a championship top four, LeBron, Anthony Davis, D'Angelo Russell, Kyle Kuzma, the answer to me is yes. And you know I love the age profile, C, of mm. let's, look at, yeah, let's, okay. let's look at this a few years out. LeBron's 34. In three years, I think LeBron's still gonna be playing, but not at this level. Then Anthony Davis is gonna be in the absolute middle of his prime. He'll be 29. D'Angelo Russell's 23, he'd be 26. So you have the good kind of rollover age as far as not overlapping. What happened in Miami was all three guys were the same age. And so when LeBron was still in his prime, D. Wade unfortunately was falling off a bit. Chris Bosh was falling off a bit. This makes a little more sense. So I don't think this would be the Lakers first option in free agency, but I think it'd be a good option. And the guy that gave up on him is gone. 
gone. The guy that kicked him on the way out the door, yeah. Magic Johnson, yeah. is gone. Mm -hmm. And people should know, they traded D'Angelo Russell not just because he was immaturity and whatever it was. They needed someone to take the Mozgov contract in order to open up a spot for LeBron James. D'Angelo Russell was the carrot to get the bad contract off the books so they could bring him back. And I think D'Angelo Russell loved LA and has a relationship with LeBron. If the Nets don't offer him the full restricted max, I think LA would probably be his first option. Yeah, and, and he's a guy too that I think the, the thing Magic pointed to was being a leader. I think you often see with young players, the maturity it brings. Yes, getting drafted setting, at 19 years back. old. Who's yeah. a leader at 19? All right, let's move on to the other point guard. We're talking about Kyrie Irving, he seems to have have his bags packed out of Boston. The question is where he goes next. Well, Brooklyn seemed to be the favorite. Sports are the Nets are questioning signing Kyrie if they can't also land Kevin Durant. Nick, are teams right to have doubts about Kyrie after his failures in Boston? I think it's totally fair to have doubts, I, but I think it's unfair to act like a guy can't learn from failure. Mm -hmm. So I do think there's an element of why would it be different in Brooklyn than it was in Boston? But the reason it would be different would be if Kyrie's different. If Kyrie yes. learns the way I try, I try the way I tried to coach up, or you know, however you want to put it, young players didn't work. My approach of just wait till the playoffs, man, th that sounds great until you don't deliver in the playoffs. And maybe I needed to come to work every day with more of a today is the day that matters mentality. So I, I understand the skepticism and the nervous anxiety about that, but I don't think it's fair to say for a 27 year old, 26 year old Kyrie Irving, he is who he is. He's never going to change. I think guys evolve as they get older. LeBron James at 27 years old, while it was nobody questioned how good of a player he was, he was already won a couple MVPs, was an immature guy. Was it the stories about LeBron off the court were not incredibly flattering about how he treated people, about those things. He grew. So I think guys in their late 20s can grow. I don't think we should shut the door on that for Kyrie. I think also it's a totally different situation. He's in an arranged marriage where he got traded from Cleveland, forced his way out, but it was arranged. Couldn't pick where he wanted to go compared to, man, he's been able to analyze the coaching, the style of play, the facilities, where he's going to be played, how he's going to be scrutinized, who's going to be there, who's going to be on the team. He's picking his team. So he should be better in this situation, knowing himself. Nick, one of my pet peeves is that people are not self-aware. And Kyrie Irving, he would be naive to go into this situation, not learning from the situation that he had there in Boston. But around the league, though, I know there's other teams that they are concerned about Kyrie and what happened in the Boston locker room. His inability, forget on the basketball court, his inability with a young group because... What team is not young? I mean, 90% of the teams are young and in transition and need someone who, like Kyrie, if he has that experience, to provide stable. How diligent is he going to be as far as taking care of his body and playing basketball? You can't be waiting until the playoffs. That's like the old NFL where guys used to you know, come to training camp to get in shape. You can't do that anymore. You have to take care of your money maker. It's your body. And if he makes that a number one priority, whichever team lands him, which I, I think is going to be the Nets, they will have a different Kyrie. And listen, I, I want to be careful here, but I want to be fully transparent with the audience. There, there are concerns around the league about Kyrie Irving, when he's not within the facility, not too dissimilar to some concerns that surrounded James Harden years ago about how much how much partying is this guy doing? Mm -hmm. How much? How will his body age with a four plus year contract? Yeah, we just the seen road? the new Harden. Harden when he dropped 62, right, and was in the weight room Afterwards. that night with his rocket shorts on, like. That's a different Harden. That's a mature, a maturing James Harden. But when he first got to Houston, I mean, they famously literally retired his jersey at one of Houston strip clubs because he was there every night. And he and did we have some eyewitnesses. I, right. Uh, okay. All right. We don't have to talk about that. Uh, and so the the the, the and I'm not saying that's what Kyrie's doing. I'm not saying Kyrie Irving's in the strip clubs all the time. I'm just saying you talk to guys around the league, and I feel like. I have not, I feel like, I know, I've heard from two teams that say, listen, yes, we'd be better with Kyrie, but he's not our top choice. And he's such a talented player, you would think he should be a top choice. I know the Lakers would love to have him mm -hmm. because he'd be back with LeBron and they know that works. I also, I don't believe the Nets, 
if they have the option to sign Kyrie Irving or going to turn it down. Maybe there's some anxiety there, but I mean, you, there are not here. KD, Kawhi, Kyrie, Kimba, Clay's not coming available. There's your top tier. Then it's Butler, Tobias Harris, Chris Middleton, D'Angelo Russell. Now we're to the third tier after that of Boogie, Vucevic, Julius Randle. There are Brooklyn, New York, Sacramento, Philly, Clippers, Dallas, Indiana, Boston, Pelicans, and maybe the Lakers. That's 10 teams with max cap space. There's gonna be a lot of people at the end of this musical chairs that are don't have a seat and don't have a free agent. If you have an opportunity to sign one of those top tier guys and you're like, ah, I don't know if I want to, I don't buy that. I think Brooklyn would sign up for Kyrie Irving and hope he's matured, but it wouldn't be risk free. I look at Kawhi as, as risk free as something can mm -hmm. be. I don't look at Kyrie the same way. And you can't forget that Kyrie's free agency is affected by Kevin Durant's injury. Because I do believe that they wanted to play together. I don't believe there was another pair out there that wanted to play together more so than them. I believe it was part of the plan. I also do believe the courtship with, with Brooklyn and Kyrie since he was a kid, him and his dad, that's real and that's muddied the waters. So Kyrie is the wild card as far as all the free agents. All right, coming up, is Zion a can't miss NBA superstar? That's ahead on First Things First. Yeah, a couple eyewitnesses, people told me. That. <laughs>